Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio. Today we're looking into four simple ways to light your exterior scenes. There are many things to consider when you're making a great exterior, a lot of which has to do with the design and the complexity of your 3D model. But as far as rendering, the exterior lighting can be extremely simple if you manage the right creative tools. So if you're looking for a beginner's guide with V-Ray Next, hopefully these tips will help with improving your workflow. Now, the exterior landscape composition plays a very important role. From the placement of the trees all the way to the grass, everything is placed so we can cast some very interesting shadows. And because the forest setup naturally emphasizes depth, it's going to look pretty cool when we set a fog effect coming through from behind the trees. And last, I have a few V-Ray lights set throughout the scene as they will be very helpful for exteriors with low light conditions. Now let's set the override material and see what we get with the default sun and sky. Now this looks more like your typical early morning sun. But we want to be very intentional so let's start with adjusting our sun and shadows so let's open the shadow tab and adjust both the time and date parameters until the shadows are well positioned and if you're looking for an alternative you can use this plugin called the solar north and if you haven't installed go ahead and set the north tool onto a surface and as you rotate you will start to see the shadows react to the angles that you're turning to now for your typical afternoon the sun should be centered in the sky but let's have the sunlight come from a slight angle so we can get some shadow profiles on this side of the landscape and once that's done you can disable the shadows update your scene and we can move on to review the sun and sky parameters now you don't have to adjust all of the parameters so let's review and adjust the most important ones now this color is going to help shift the color of the sunlight naturally the sunlight is white so we can leave this color as it is now the three color modes is going to influence how this color affects the sunlight, each mode having a different influence on its intensity and how the sunlight responds. So let's set this to override so the sunlight can reflect this white color that we set here. Let's leave the intensity to one. As for the size multiplier, this controls the physical size of the sun and the radius of your shadows. So the higher this value, the larger the physical sun and the softer the shadows will turn out. Now notice that with a value of 1, there's already a big difference between the shadows we get from the trees and from the objects that are closer to the ground. Now this is true because of the distance between the trees and the projection surface, so higher objects will naturally produce softer shadows. So let's set this to a value of 5 and that will be the sweet spot to soften up the shadows that are close to the ground and still maintain the shadow profile of the trees that are higher up. As for the sky condition, this allows you to switch between different procedural sky models, control the turbidity and the ozone within those skies. Now turbidity controls the dust in the air and ozone controls and affects the color of the sunlight. So unless you're going for very unique sky conditions, you rarely get to touch these parameters. And similar to the ground settings, you can change the color, the blend, the angle, and the horizon offset. And again, the default parameters are as real as it gets, so you can leave these parameters as they are. Now for me, this is already pretty good. Overall, I like where the sunlight is casting the shadows and the overall white balance of the entire image. With this base rendering, take it into Photoshop for very quick post-production, and you can end up with a very decent image. So let's switch things up and go for the golden hour during the sunset. Now this time, I want to cast some very long shadows across the entire scene. So we have to reposition the sun very late into the afternoon. As for the sun, let's shift the color of the sunlight so we can get that deep orange color that we would see during the sunset. Now this is looking great, I'm liking the result of the sun and the position of the shadows, but let's change our sky background so we can add a few clouds to the sky. So for this, we can use the dome light with the complementary HDRI just to replace the sky. So let's disable the background in the environment settings and add a dome light with the HDRI.
Now two things to keep in mind. You can use the transform option to rotate the HDRI to the position that you like. And two, you can switch the HDRI from covering the hemisphere to covering a full sphere. Now the options here is the most important part. So you want to keep the invisibility unchecked and also disable all the other options. As for the reflections, you can keep this checked to complement your sky, but again, everything here is completely optional. Now this is the result that we get by combining the sun and sky and HDRI. So again, take this into Photoshop and you can end up with something like this. Now, an overcast sky is a very unique sky condition where the clouds overshadow 95% of the entire sky. The direct sunlights are diffused into soft light and the shadows become extremely soft. So how do we go about creating something like this? Let's start by decreasing the sun intensity to 0.5 and to soften up the shadows we can increase the size multiplier to a very high number. As for the sky, let's change the procedural mode to the overcast option and this is going to enable the horizontal illumination which is another way for us to increase the brightness of the sky. Now this is completely optional if your scene is already well exposed. So in my case, I'm going to decrease this to a value of 10,000 so I can have a slightly underexposed sky. And to compensate for the low light, I'm going to turn on all the V-ray lights that I have in my scene. This is our result, the overall white balance seems to be on point and the V-ray lights really bring out the details under the trees. In post, I focus on the highlight and contrast or specifically on the green colors on the grass and on the trees. If you want to learn how to create a grass like this and check out other examples using V-Ray Fur, I'll have a little card on the screen which will take you to our latest video. Now for a sky condition like this, we can add more realism by introducing rain effects or an atmospheric fog. And this can be a very basic fog, so let's review the parameters. Now this is the color of the fog when it's illuminated by a light source. So suppose I want one of my V-Ray lights to emit a different color when the fog is on. This right here is the parameter to adjust. Now the emission color and the multipliers is the actual color of the fog. And the multiplier value helps control the emission of that color. So let's set this to a mid-grade to match our sky. And we can adjust the multiplier accordingly. As for the distance, this controls the density of the fog. So adjusting this value determines how far the fog is from the position of the camera. The larger this value, the further the fog and the more transparent it's going to appear. As for the height, this is a very important parameter. This controls how high you're going to place the fog. So for this example, I'm going to set the fog above the cabin and to end somewhere between the top of the trees. Now the scatter GI results in a similar effect that we would get from using the emission color. So we can skip this parameter for now. Now the effect by option allows you to pick which lights is going to affect the fog. So you want to make sure that your lights are properly named because you're going to be selecting them from this list. And last you want to be sure to include the atmosphere and Z depth channel as they can be very useful in post production and so you don't have to re-render your fog effects once you're happy with it. And you can also take the same render element and apply it to other renderings with the same camera views. As for night setting this may be the easiest to set up but also the one that requires the most attention to detail. Unlike the last few examples, the sun is no longer the main source of light. So here we get to decrease the sun intensity low enough so that it can produce a very subtle soft light similar to what you would get from the moon. And now we can start to reveal the image by lighting up the environment with the V-ray lights that we've placed throughout the scene. Now I recommend using warm tones for the V-ray light because in this case they start to become the main focus of the rendering. And when it comes to post-production, you also want to be very intentional the mood you're portraying and the story that you're creating by adding elements that are going to visually complement your image. So Photoshop doesn't have to be a crazy process if you already have a goal in mind of what you're trying to portray in your image. And that is all for this video. Thank you if you've reached this point and comment down below if these tips have helped you or if you will use them in a different way. 
with that being said like the video share and subscribe peace and i'll see you guys next time